everybody! Heather Stargazer here to do a reading for the collective for whoever, whenever, wherever. Hope you guys are doing great. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I once again have the 144 um, tuning fork. I almost called it a healing fork. I'm telling you, this has been my favorite one, so I am inclined to share it with you again. All right, let's light the Milo. All right, 144. I love the little triangle. Milo. Okay. The dangers of reading in the living room. Maybe we should tune Milo. He really doesn't mind it. Yeah, he got down. Uh, I hope you guys are doing wonderful today. Um, we're going to, to get a theme for our uh, read today, we're going to pull an Earth Magic card. Oh, these eclipses are coming up, or this eclipse is coming up. This one just passed. Things are going on. Universe, spirit. Wow. What is going on? Purification. I just heard, I want to know. Have you ever seen the rain coming down a sunny day? All right, rain is purification. No matter, no matter whether it's a light shower or a deluge, rain cleanses and purifies. The moisture that has evaporated from the various bodies of water on the planet was drawn into the atmosphere and now returns to the earth as liquid precipitation in nature's vast and comprehensive water recycling program. Depending on when and where the rain falls, it can come as a welcome relief or a nuisance. Even the air smells fresh after a good rain. It also brings in clean water, which provides sustenance for plants, animals, and humans. At its most intense, rainstorms arrive as an avalanche of water, often accompanied by great and powerful winds. With considerable flooding and destruction as an unfortunate consequence of nature's impersonal balancing act, what is purged makes way for the new life to appear. Purifying your mind, body, and spirit is the task that is put before you. Purify your mind by identifying a prominent belief that you carry about yourself that inhibits you from being fully engaged in life, from showing up 100% of the time. Purify your heart by allowing yourself to breathe in and out blessings and forgiveness so that you can love even more deeply. And let yourself feel grief. Truly feel it so that the rivers of your tears become miniature baptisms that help you heal the wounds in your soul. If necessary, detoxify the body, the temple, and the seed of the soul by changing your diet, doing a cleanse for a few days, or simply drinking more water. Increasing the daily amount of water you drink with a deep appreciation for its purpose will revitalize your spirit. It's no wonder that in some indigenous languages, water is called lifeblood, as it is so essential to every form of life on earth. Take time. Purify yourself. <coughs> wow. That is crazy. For these eclipse seasons, for what's going on, purify yourself. Purify um, your body, your temple right been going through this we've been talking about going through this i keep meeting people who are also going through similar things you know readjustment of the body mind and spirit readjustment of the situation the perception the um reaction to what is going on what is going on king of wands four of wands right we're taking the initiative and leadership to move forward and putting those stakes down right putting those stakes in the ground and setting the quadrants of the foundation. So, um, and it, this this is a lot of fire energy. This is doing it with passion. This is doing it with drive. This is doing it with creativity. I just saw 444. Four, four. The angels are here. The spirit is here. Whatever it is that you believe that divinity is, however it is that it 
presents itself and presents itself to you, it is here to tell you that you are capable and that it is time to set these um, foundations in place. Look at those, they look like, uh, what is that? Uh, it, like at first I wanted to say poplar, but they're, um, come on, I'm a gardener, there's a bunch of them. There's emperor, emperor ones across the street and I'm hearing emperor, but these giant trees, arborvitaes, arborvitaes, thank you. And, and they grow so tall and they grow for very, very, very long time and they create a green screen shield fence, right? A living fence to, um, and say protect your sacred space but to give it a boundary right this is about boundaries this is see these little compartmentalizing things in this are we compartmentalizing are we taking what doesn't need uh to be there and leave and leaving space for things that do seven of pentacles yeah the worthwhile investments that take a long time the patience that is required the purification process so um when we when we cleanse out our bodies right we're um like cleansing the slate right we're cleaning the palate we're letting everything clear out so that the new flavor can come in and it isn't inhibited by the other thing you know it's like brushing your teeth and then drinking orange juice you want to make sure that after you've cleansed that space out right that you've cultivated it and made it ready for the new new and it might taste a little weird but it's still orange juice right and you know it just tastes like that because you just cleansed your mouth and i'm also thinking about with all this fire i'm thinking about um you know like uh, the slash and burn method for um, regenerating soil right i know slash and burn isn't always the best way to go when clearing things out but a little bit of that actually is huge in fire mitigation so again with these boundaries taking the time things that could have been growing for quite a while that were um first just little volunteers that have become weeds that are really choking out the life of the surrounding things which you're really really trying to grow which you would really really like to grow so it's time to clear out that space and the and the soil level right at the bottom of the garden so that there's enough room for i just keep hearing like there's enough room for all of these things that you're growing all of the stuff that's coming in on the bottom the magician i love it right you are in charge of your what you are manifesting and the power is all you have all of the tools available to you um use your power wisely use your responsibility wisely let's get some clarifiers on this uh one just jumped out when i did that did you see that look under the king of wands king of coins we're going to keep it right there. That's two king energies. Now, this could be um, two masculine energies that come into your life and want to help you. This could be you and another. This could be you both. Both could be you. And that's how we're going to read it because we're reading for our, uh, our own personal development. We're staying in our own lane and we're minding our own business, right? We aren't here to spy on other people. We are here to um, kind of spy on ourselves and what, you know, the situation is going on. We're looking at it from an outside perspective here. And we got two kings, the king of um coins and the king of wands right steadfast loyal um really really like working that soil knowing how to get manifest back from the things that we invest in and that passionate drive that leadership that spark to get it going you know um because we have these four of wands and, and that's that fire in a stable place that's that passion in a stable place the fool i absolutely love this right starting something new putting new foundations down we've never done this before we may have never been here before we may have tried something similar i mean we are kings right um regardless less of gender but um or how you identify yourself it's the masculine energy it is that exerting force right going out and doing it not just thinking about it not just feeling it not just processing it and digesting it we're actually going out and taking action and doing it and uh, the fool and the magician are here to lend us energy, to show us the way, to say, lads, it's springtime, April 1st, right? Rabbit, rabbit, don't forget to say rabbit, rabbit. Be there for yourself. I just heard, be there for yourself. Three cards popped out. We get the seven of wands. Now we have two sevens. The nine of swords and the eight of coins. Oh, don't don't it's like we're super worried and defensive about the work that we're putting in it's like it's going over and over and over in our brain and we're and we're standing on higher ground here you've learned these lessons you've put this in you're worried about this investment coming back well guess what you won't know unless you try and if you don't try the guarantee is zero 
So get out there, do it, right? Make that make that stride, make that move, and kind of get out of your head about it because it's kind of keeping you up at night. Look at the bottom, six of wands. On the bottom, the overarching energies, we have the six of wands and the magician. Hell yeah. Hell yes. Because now we are moving forward, right? We're solid, you're solid. Keep going. You're solid, you keep going. The worry might be there, but the only way to get through it is to do the work, right? That's what transmutation is of, on an energetic level, on a personal level. When we take something like anxiety and we channel that anxiety into a constructive work, and that constructive work um, is like takes on, like now all of that energy is turned into something real right? Something productive, something peaceful, right? We've channeled that. We no longer have to hold this anxiety from a place of defensiveness, which is why we're doing it, right? And of course we are, because this is your new world. This is your new foundation. This is this new investment. And after all this gardening that we've done to clear out all of the weeds and really purify, go back to the purification, purify the land, purify yourself, purify your thoughts. Why are you doing this? As we weed things out, one of my favorite things about gardening is weeding. And I think that most people hate it. And that's why they love to hire me or used to. I don't really do it for hire anymore. But because I thoroughly enjoyed clearing out those spaces and then recycling the, I called it the slash, the slash and burn method, right? The things that we take out of the ground and composting them to make them useful, give their life purpose. We're not just ripping them out of the ground and throwing them away. We're recycling them. We're composting them. We're turning them into something that can be metabolized by our garden, by the things that we're growing. That's that transmutation. Once again, delight on the bottom. I love it. Delight and remembrance. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What are we talking about here? Exactly. The frequency of remembrance supports our memory of everything that we have gone through as a soul in body, providing us with viable information and tools to flow gracefully with and in this life. Look how beautiful it is. It looks like a peacock to me right now. It's standing out like this full show, right? Ready to get out here. And I really want to read this um, delight too. The frequency of delight supports our capacity to create and experience feelings of intense joy and happiness. The more delight we feel, the more delight we evoke in others. Your delight is contagious. Spread it around, you know? Go ahead and do that and, and allow that in. What is These are these message cards. And it says secrets and communication. Secrets and communication. And look, there's this delight. And there's two people here having a having a conversation, which is really interesting because there is actually only one air card out. There's only one sword card out, and it's the nine of swords. I just saw thirteen, thirteen. That's that. Uh, internal dialogue that internal worry that keeps us up at night that's the only communication that's going on in this situation right now and what it's asking is to go through those secret thoughts that you're having and weed out what's unnecessary what's not helpful what's harmful right weed out the garden of your thoughts while you're standing on high ground before all those vines come up to you chop them down Make sure that space stays clear so that your arborvitaes or your poplars or whatever it is that you're using to create a boundary around your new space, around your project, around your garden, right? As long as those things are there, there is a space for you to really communicate with yourself um, those secret thoughts and what's going on. And I'm also uh, drawn to say, communicate wisely who you're communicating with there might be a, a you know a partner here and i'm not seeing it as a love partner i'm seeing it maybe as a business partner an investment a friend um, even if it is your romantic partner this might have more to do with something like your home your foundation what's what's going on in the big picture um go ahead and have that conversation and things will be revealed through communication, right? And that's how we purify. First, we have to get right with our own internal dialogue. I just saw 1411. This is strong. Fours are strong. Look at this. Healing. 
discover your life's purpose. Through healing, through this healing, through this process of really digging into those secret thoughts, those those um, naysayers that live in your brain, get them out of there. They need to heal. Why are you sad at me? Thoughts? Why are you sad at me? Well, having a conversation there between yourself is going to heal you and reveal your life's purpose because the thing, the things that hurt us most, the biggest struggles that we have in life, right? They're there to teach us something, and that's a gift. And then that gift is given to us so that we can share it, right? All of the things that I've been through in my life, um, which are so strange, sometimes I, I start talking and people actually, I think they think I'm making it up, you know, but I'm, I'm not. I've just lived a very, very, I'm like the cat lady, right? Nine lives, very strange ones. And um, all of those things have taught me lessons, and they've changed me and they've grown me and they've healed me so that I can share these lessons with you. So you can go out and share your lessons with others and we can heal. And that is the um, the sharing of our life's purpose, whatever that might be. I mean, it might be everything that you learned about some kind of um, occupation that you, that you belong to. And now you're showing that to others, you're teaching others. And so that area of occupation grows and evolves and therefore benefits everyone in the world right we all we all benefit from your work eventually but you got to start somewhere and that's that's through that interior communication remembrance through delight or delight through remembrance right they weren't all bad times even if they were bad situations that you went through or hurtful situations, when you were there, you were drawn to it because something about it was positive. And so we tend to focus on the negative things, but we also did learn some positive things. We did love. Better to love and lose than never love at all, right? And um, though all of those things we carry with us. And so what is your life purpose? I feel like I'm rambling, but apparently it's important. Look at that letting go on the bottom. Purification. Purify. What no longer, and when it says no longer serves, I don't mean is it bringing you breakfast, hon. I mean, is it actually doing good in your life? Is it actually taking you into a space of um, healing, of proportionate growth, right? Where everything is like in balance, Again, with this not this, this defense. We got seven of wands and not this. A lot of defensive energy, a lot of defensive action going on here. And then we get anguish, and this is about um, like the harmony of rebirth. This is about things, it's growing together. I believe it's a year. Let me look at this because I don't have my book. Creation, evolution, wholeness, energetic bursts, harmony, tewas is evolution. This is Inguis, sorry, Inguis. Tewaz, wow. Tewaz is actually um, like the fighter room. And this is all about harmony. So it's talking about like the defensiveness, um, need, resistance, cr uh, creative friction, efforts, and delays, and then harmony and um, creation and wholeness. Both of these, one says creative friction and one says creativity. And we have the King of Wands, was the first one out, and the Magician, and the Fool. You have that within you. Create. Let it be free, right? Through the purification process, through, through the rain. I don't want to feel like singing again. I want to pull one more as a closing card. I'm so glad you guys are here. Are here. Thank you. Thank you for being on this journey. Thank you for taking the time to communicate with yourself. And look at that, in solitude. And an island. An island of solitude. How beautiful with that purple tree. And there's that rain in the background. Yeah. I know there's two uh, court cards here, but this really feels like an inside job, doesn't it, guys? It really feels like that time that we need to take alone to ourselves. Oh, it's because I'm looking for solitude and the word is island. <laughs> I should be looking for taking some time to myself on an island. An island in the sun. Now I'm here in Weezer. All right. The solitary tree on this island surrounded by the gra glassy sea can invoke different feelings depending on one's perceptions and beliefs. The tree, which is in full bloom, stands out amid the relative starkness and illuminated by a beam of light emerging from an otherwise dark sky. 
It is an elegant reminder of how even in what might appear to be relatively barren circumstances, there is still beauty and growth. Although an island like this can be a metaphor for isolation and desolation, the thriving tree proves that even in the harshest environments, there is life. And we can see the tree's spider-like roots spreading out along the rocks, seeking nourishment from the soil. The sense of peace and solitude depicted in this image provides nourishment for the soul. You need to take some time for solitude, preferably in silence. Spend the morning, afternoon, or the entire day by yourself, completely unplanned and unstructured. The bombardment of your senses by the noise and intensity of society leaves you on alert for more than is necessary. The vibration of millions of people worry and fear throughout the world can impinge on you and greatly affect you if you do not honor your need to pull back from time to time. When you have passed through any self-constructed barriers to enjoying the quiet and peace of solitude, it will serve you best when you simply observe the thoughts and emotions that pass through you, especially those that can cause shortness of breath or a quickening heartbeat. Remember that solitude is experienced not by choice, but out of fear. When you decide... Yeah, that's what it says. When you decide to spend time with yourself in solitude, however, you are choosing to once again find and connect with who you really are. You know, that's interesting. Do you do you seek solitude when you are in fear? I would think that that's the opposite for most people. Um, I seek solitude quite often, and it isn't out of fear. It's out of peace. I'm a very solitary creature, and it's served me well. The more I'm around people, exactly, the more I'm influenced by them. And I think that these two cards together are telling us to, and this whole read is really telling us to take that moment to purify, to cleanse, to take what doesn't need to be there so that what is growing can have the all those nutrients, can have all that soil, can collect all of that sunshine, can absorb all of that rain. Right? And those things that we take out, we recycle, we compost, we transmute into something usable. I just saw 222. Two, two. Absolutely. Letting go of what we don't need so that what we are already invested in, our foundations for our new new, can grow. So um, I'm just going to, and look at this on the bottom, it's Saulo. That's wholeness. It's a hummingbird. How beautiful is that? I love it. Delight. I'm delighted. Mm -hmm. oh, I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that you got something out of it. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for remembering to hit the like and subscribe button. And thanks for coming back to see me again next time. Wishing you guys a beautiful, beautiful day.